So now you've got the deal, I want you to consider how you're going to present. Now we did a lot of that yesterday, so we're not going to do that today. But think about that process, you can present that process to a partner before you actually have a deal. And do you remember I talked about people will decide to work with you because of who you are and the deal comes secondary? So you can actually present that kind of theoretical process to a partner before you bring a deal in. And I would suggest you do because then you don't get excited about the opportunity you actually talk about the process and it becomes very clear without any sparkle. Because when there's a deal, there's, there's something that shuts off in the brain and goes, yeah, 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 I, I know dry rot can happen, <gasps> but I won the deal. You know, well, well you kind of want to imbue the process first with your partner so that the excitement of the deal doesn't carry them away to not hear. There's a big difference between what somebody says and what people hear very big difference then um, so when we had investors join our vip group uh, the process would be that the team would then put a call in the diary with me and i would say forgive me i know this sounds really silly um, but could you treat me like i'm stupid we hope we've communicated everything to you but i appreciate there was a lot of information can you repeat back to me how you get the deal how it happens for you how you pay how you get paid and for some of you that have been members of my group you've had that conversation with me because I want to make sure that what we are sure we've said is actually what's been heard there is always a kind of radio wave gap between what you know you've said and what someone's heard because sometimes they're just too excited about the deal or there's just too much information for the brain to process so I always do that Embar I'm sorry, this sounds, uh, almost sounds embarrassing, but treat me like I'm stupid and talk me through what you think you've understood in case we haven't communicated it correctly. Um, and that really works and it usually picks up one or two gaps where we think we've said it, but they haven't heard it. So let's just make sure we've understood. Right. We've talked about deals yesterday. How do you evaluate deals and what would you want to see if you're on the other side? So we're going to come over that today, but that is a nice piece of homework for you guys to do. What would you put down on a deal evaluation exercise? So briefly, what would you want to see? Comparables. Comparables. How many? Uh, nine. nine. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, nine's all right. Um, what? Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I'd be really nervous with that. That's good that we just explore that. So if you presented a deal to me with three past, three present and three, or well, three past as in sold, three present as in sold subject to contract and three future as in currently on the market, I'd be really nervous. That's too small a statistical group. Because I, I, e even if I entirely trusted your credibility and honesty, you may still have gotten it wrong. Um, you may just have, you know how in cities particularly, one street is very cool, the next street drops socially or, or lifts socially by one or two streets. Um, so let's say 10 to keep my maths easy. If you've got one of them wrong, you are 10% out. If you've got two of them wrong, you're 20% out. If you've got three of them wrong, you are 30% out. 10 for me is too small a data collection to be pretty sure we've got this right. Anyone else agree? Okay. <laughs> 45. <laughs> Where did you get that figure from, Fern Cole? At 45 comparables we, I, we aim for is what I ask Ash to deliver. But what, what would you guys do? So for me, nine is too small. Cause just because genuinely it could be gotten wrong. And, and that's too small a statistical group. You're kind of limited to what is out there then. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going for a read more for the minute. I'm trying to get my valuation up. But yeah. I can't find enough properties in the area to meet my criteria. Not that I, I'm not trying to fake the number. There's, yeah. there's not enough three bedroom properties in that street and that area. Okay, so what do you do then? You could do that. Estate agents, because square footage isn't quite UK based yet. So get estate agents out to or to either give you a desktop evaluation or to come out and do a visit and and have a written so we i am refinancing four flats on tuesday we have a beautiful package ready for the surveyor with two estate agents evaluations of every single flat it doesn't mean to say the surveyor is going to agree with me on evaluation but he's highly likely because i have two um t you know letterhead uh, headed note papers with the estate agent saying thank you for allowing me to visit the flat i estimate it's worth x y or z 
So estate agent valuations first. The same valuation as a mortgage valuation? No, 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 it's just oh, them no, it's coming not, out. Officially it's not, but that, that's what we're looking for, a mortgage valuation, not I'm, estate agents. But. I'm looking for their uh, uh, professional opinion as to the worth of the property. And then, if you're still, I uh, would get that, definitely. And for us, we always want to ask four or five estate agents what their opinion is, and we stick it in our deal reports. And we also stick the phone number and the branch of the estate agent so that our investors can phone up. Secondly, if you still are struggling numbers-wise, as you two guys necessarily are, I'd ask the estate agent, if somebody didn't live in this street, where else would they live in my town or city? So it may be, are you ready? <laughs> We've got person, person here, and they would like, I love this street, but ooh, I wouldn't live in that one, but ooh, I would definitely live in that one. So weirdly, you can have comparable social economic enclaves here and here. So I would do that. And then the third thing that we did, now we don't need to do it at the moment, but we did when we started out because, of course, we had the 2006-2007 room, so we had this lovely little spike, we looked at time. So when we were evaluating in 2008, 2009, 2010, God, it seems so long ago, we were going back to 2006, 2005 and ignoring to the, the, the spike. So there's, there's, there's ways of going around. So it's time, space, estate agents and social economic similarities. Jason. So you get estate agents out to a house that you actually haven't bought yet to help work through the stages of value? No. No, we don't get them out. Um, if I'm refinancing, um, uh, we will do a verbal phone, A1 done up, meaning white walls, beige carpet, nothing fancy. Any good estate agent knows every single property for sale in their patch. Um, they, prob they may well have already done a valuation to try and get the business in the first place, and they, anybody who's good knows every single property for sale. And they, they have an opinion on it. You know? And we don't ask them to hammer up, we want the facts. When you go in for a remortgage valuation as well, incidentally, one of the things that we quite often do, if you want to get, is, is find out what the anticipated or the average yield is on buy to let property in your area, and then uh, quote that yield to say, this is how I've arrived at my valuation figure. Um, that works better with HMOs than family lets, but it does, you know, so in other words, if your area, the yield is 7%, you work that back. Yeah. Because if you've just freshly <coughs> refurbed, your house is going to get a higher rental cost yes. than the crap one down the road, isn't it? Yes. So, yeah, so what you do is, so somebody else might be charging 700 rent or something, yeah, and you might be charging 800 rent. So you can point that out as a comparable. So that house there is renting <coughs> that much money because it's tired. Mine is this much money. It's the same yield. It's therefore worth this. Yes. So if that makes sense. We also um, put in, and Tiff, you just created a whole load of packs at the moment for me, haven't you? We also show our uh, letting advert, and of course our adverts are beautiful because we paid £200 for a photographer, and we also include the AST if we've already got tenants in. We just try and give them as much data as they possibly can use that is helpful to our cause and factually correct. And um, is ve uh, we also provide it on a memory stick as well. So I've got a pack and that pack is for them to take away. And should they require it in a memory stick? Oh, I just happen to have one. I mean, what's that cost? Nothing. Just a little bit of help. Just a nice little bit of help. So, do research. We've talked about sold in the last 18 months, sold subject to uh, contract on the market, estate agent desk valuation. Statistically, nine for me, too small. Too big a possibility to make a 10% mistake every time, or a What's not <laughs> nine divided by 100, like a 11.5% or something?